be your best. Turn back the hands of time. Beauty starts with you, starts now. Image Spa and Do. Welcome to this episode of The Sacred Self. I'm your host, Steph Safandos, relational alchemist, community builder, and change maker. And it's my honor and my pleasure to be here with you today. We're speaking to a sensitive subject today on vulnerability, empowered vulnerability in intimate relationship in particular. And it, vulnerability is a term that most of us do not want to hear. We don't want to even engage in. We get the, uh, the chills when we think about it or when we hear it, we, we feel strange, especially men. Men really struggle with vulnerability. And what is vulnerability? It is really exposing your authentic self in that moment. How you feel about something of great importance to you, you are able to express that openly, knowing that it may upset other people. It may rock the apple cart, so to speak. It may disenchant others and therefore that can cause friction or confrontation or an argument and the spiral effect of being vulnerable and open can actually be uh, temporarily of course devastating it can be difficult and challenging and so many of us will avoid that because we will avoid confrontation we will avoid difficulty we will avoid challenge but it is at a cost people it is at a cost of your inner health your inner psychological and emotional health and slowly if that becomes a habitual neural patterning what happens is we begin to move through life at a deficit we begin to move through life coming through our pain bodies and our fear centers as opposed to coming from a place of authentic empowerment and openness. Being vulnerable, expressing ourselves or having an ability to clarify our emotions as clear as possible, as best as we can, clarifying who we are, our desires, our needs, our ideas, our belief systems, the way we want or would like life to be and go is so empowering because it allows us to filter this is the importance. It allows us to filter experiences that do not serve us. It allows us to filter out through our life experiences and relationships that do not serve us, that are perhaps toxic to our health, that are perhaps unhealthy. Being vulnerable allows us to be honest with who we are. It allows us to embody and pursue experiences that actually matter, that mean something to us, that are of grave importance. And it allows other people as well to make choices, conscious open choices about what they wish to bring into their lives. Because perhaps your values may not align with theirs and they have every right in intimate relationship to know that, to be aware of that to be familiar with that. And these are lessons that I have learned over the years, of course, most of them the hard way. So I stand here before you imparting this, this knowledge and this wisdom, this embodied praxis of being vulnerable is key to our emotional health and integrity. And being vulnerable really opens us up in such a dramatic, empowering way. Men, if you can be vulnerable, Women, if you can be vulnerable, if you can connect to yourselves in intimacy and really be truthful and open about who you are and how you wish to move through the world, your relationships will flourish and grow. You will feel more connected to self and you will be more engaged in life in so many different ways. Opportunities will open up for you, I promise. It's a difficult challenge. It's a, at time, arduous path to tread, but it is worth it. For more information, you can find me on stepsofandos.com and you can connect with me on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube at Steps of Fandos. I wish you so many blessings on your journey and one is always glad to be of service. These faces look familiar. Their lips curve to smile at you, as if they've known you forever. They welcome you with open arms and hug you like their There's own. something about them. She holds my hand and listens. Then she prays with me. He asks how my day is going. He doesn't judge me. He listens. He says God cares. I believe because he shows I it. I believe because he shows I it. I must come back. I think I'm made for this. I leave my home broken and I come to this place that is lit with beautiful faces who love who God. Love God. Who love God.
guys, I'm Thomas Serlina. You're watching your time with Thomas the Experience with Manila Up TV, and we're about to go island hopping. Let's go check it out. Right, about to go up some steps. We're almost there. We're almost there, Dad. All right, guys, this was so much fun out here. I'm your host, Thomas Serlina. You've been watching your time with Thomas and the Experience with Vanilla Up TV. I'll see you guys next time. Over the last 75 years, the unique warmth of our people has touched millions of lives. The heart of the Filipinos shining through, Filipino lives shining through. All you had to offer was friendship. Like who would still be around? Real situations expose fake people, so sometimes it takes getting down on life to find who's really down. You see, people pretend well when their souls are for sale. And sometimes it's the ones you love the most that mostly want to see you fail, that's real. Just because they riding with you doesn't mean they riding for you, that's facts. You see, loyalty shouldn't depend on your presence, it's more about how they act behind your back. Who can you trust?
Hi, and welcome to a very special, world-exclusive edition of Melody in Motion. I am your host, Melody Garcia with Manila Up TV. Today, I am so excited and so thrilled to be interviewing somebody who has directly impacted my life and ignited the very message that lives within me. His name is Trent Shelton. He has over 7 million followers just on social media space, and his last video was shared over 728,000 times. This is how powerful this man's walk is, but wait until you hear who and what he attributes his success to. I cannot wait to share this with you. As I said, this is a very special moment for me personally, and I hope you find the value, wisdom, and acknowledge and understanding that will come from the presence of someone so great. Uh, you know, I was a professional football player and, uh, you know, probably like the 10th time I got cut really hit my break my breakdown point. Uh, I didn't really care too much about life anymore because I thought that my life was over. I mean, that was what I did my whole entire life. So I thought there was nothing more to my life. I thought my future, uh, I thought my past was better. You know, I thought my future didn't have anything worth living for. You know, that was where I hit my rock bottom. At. And we have time. Yeah. You know, I we we went I went hiking in the woods, y'all. I don't you don't normally do that, but yeah. it's with Trent. And it was one of the most powerful moments in my life just to be able to listen not only to him but the proximity of all the breakdown to breakthrough struggles and what he probably doesn't realize before I, I get into the hashtag rehab time is this. He does what he does out of his heart, but he has not truly realized, I don't think he really have the millions of lives that he has impacted. His last video was shared 728,000 times in climbing. I'm pretty sure in a couple of months we will hit the million mark on that. How does that make you feel? Um, if you look back in your journey, yeah. and, and I think we talked about it, 10 minutes, uh, yeah. uh, or 10 people, 10 likes, right. and you thought that was something. Right. Now here you are with nearly over 7 million followers on different social media spaces, a video that is almost at a million right. shares. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel good, not from a standpoint of, uh, you know, personal, uh, like bragging, you know, like mm -hmm. feeling good like that. Uh, but it makes me feel good that that many people are getting the message, you know, that people are really uh, feeling the message and really, you know, sharing it. And uh, it's incredible to me because I remember when I started in my room, you know, it was never about numbers, though. That's mm -hmm. the thing that a lot of people you know, I would share to you watching this. I mean, you know, numbers are, you know, are a part of it. Numbers mm -hmm. show you, you know, how many people you're reaching, how you're growing. But at the end of the day, if you can impact one person, you know, that's where it starts. And my whole goal was to impact a life. So when I make a video, that's my whole mindset. And to see that one, you know, impact, you know, millions of people, it's just incredible. And uh, the best part of it is that people are getting helped by it. And that's, that's what I set out to do, and that's what I care about. Did you fathom that you would grow in this in this platform or no when you first started, would you say, 10 years ago? Yeah, about, about 10, it'll be 10 years next year. Um, not at all, you know, because when I started rehab time, it wasn't to be a speaker. It wasn't for anybody. It was for me. You know, it was, it was what saved my life, you know, uh, mind, body and soul. So I never thought I would be doing this, you know, let alone how big rehab time is. And then once I realized this was my purpose and it started growing, um, you know, I started to envision, you know, bigger things going across, you know, going outside the country and things like that. And to see that come to pass is truly incredible. And it's just a testament to the people who support me, you know, because I don't know seven million people. You know, I know a few hundred, maybe. And it's the people who, like yourself, who see my messages, tag people, share it, that allow me to spread my purpose across the world. I'm grateful for it. Thank you. And now, rehab time. How did that come about? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I hit, I hit my rock bottom. And I remember being in my, mom, in my mom's house in my room. And I just told myself, like, it's rehab time. I was crying. I said, you know, it's rehab time. And I guess the word came from me understanding sports, right? Or me understanding mm -hmm. physical injury. When you get physical, physical injury, or when you get injured in a physical way, you go to rehab, right? And the process is hard. Sometimes the process sucks, for better mm -hmm. lack of words. But if you put, if you take your time, you can be stronger than you were before you got hurt. So it means putting the strength back into a weakness. So I wanted to take that same philosophy and put it into mind, body, and soul, my spiritual life, my physical life, and my mental life. And that's where it started. So I just started saying rehab time and I started going to the gym, working out. And it was a thing that nobody knew about except myself. And as I started to share with friends, like what you about to go do? Rehab time. And it just grew to what it is today. Now, he said something so pivotal this morning that, you know, just destroyed and repaired my heart at the same time and my soul, which is, what is your ultimate life purpose? So with our small select group this morning that went hiking, some, you know, somebody actually asked Trent, what is your ultimate life purpose? 
And would you like to share? It yeah, for you? sure. Uh, just me being a believer of faith, you know, I want to I want to lead lead people closer to God. You know, in my way, uh, might not be the way you know everybody might the traditional way. Mm -hmm. This is what God has called me to do. And uh, you know, second of all, is to help people understand their worth. And that's what I live for. I mean, know your worth is something real for me because when I understood my worth, my life changed. I want people to know worth isn't anything external, it's everything internal. So all the messages that you see, you are based around those two things. So when I leave this earth, I want people to feel, you know, feel great about who they were. So when I leave, I hope people say, you know, Trent just cared about making people better. And if that's what's said, then I feel like my job is done. And you have two little ones. Yes. How I have old a, are they? Tristan is nine years old and Maya, she's about to be two. Now, we live in a world, guys, that are, you know, as a global advocate for, actually, I represent UNICEF as well. Mm -hmm. As a congressional action team leader here in Orlando, you know, I believe, and then you probably share this, we start with the youth. Right. What are the messages you have for children around the world that could be viewing this? For sure, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. The main message is be yourself, and I know you hear that a lot, but when you realize that out of all the people in the world, you're you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes we we're, we're, well, all of us, we're human beings, so... We're influenced a lot by what we see, by what we do. And I tell people, be influenced by how you were created. Like, mm -hmm. you're never going to find another you. You can find somebody who looks like you, talks like you, laughs like you, but there's nobody that's going to be another you. And so when you own that gift, mm -hmm. that's where your true power rests. And I would tell people, you know, forget opinions. Everybody's going to have opinions. People are going to talk about you. You're going to lose friends during the journey. But as long as you keep progressing, even during the hard times, even during the good times, your life will go, will go uh, where to where it needs to be. Well, thank you so much for your time. With Melody in Motion, Manila Thank you, Melody. I appreciate you. And Ahi, you are a gift. Your presence is a gift to the world. Your name was obviously called by the Most High to impact what is going to be something tremendous in there. So I appreciate you, my love for you, my prayers for continued blessings for all the generations you're going to be blessing. Thank you. This I, message. I appreciate Thank you. I'm going to give you. a Thank hug. You. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank Bye, you. Bye, guys. To be radiant. To be glowing to be your best. Turn back the hands of time. Beauty starts with you, starts now. Image, spa, and do. Gigi basically welcomed you yes. into her home. Yes. So tell us about that because Filipinos are just so inviting and so hospitable. So yes, tell us. I so agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. I was in college at the time, and Gigi and I, I met her when I was uh, working. Mm -hmm. And so we all became really good friends through our friend Lisa Harrington, yeah. um, who I started modeling with years ago. And so we all became really good friends, and then I think I was either losing my apartment or needed a, a, a place to stay. Yeah. And she said, hey, you can come live with us. I don't think she let her mother know that because it was her mama's house. But the mama was like, well, hey, as long as you pay your rent, yeah. keep it clean, yeah. we're all good. And so they became my extended Filipino family, Gigi, Lisa, and mom. Oh and to this day, we are all still very good friends. Yeah. And they were at my book party. They were, was, they were. Yes. Did they, you enjoy yourself? I did, party I did. She always throws the best parties. And that's what I love about her. Like she comes to my events and I go to her events and we're like the biggest cheerleaders for each other. Cheers. And you need those cheerleaders in your life, mm. waving those pom poms mm. and waving their hands in the air. And you're just like, go, Celebrating go, go. You. Yes. Celebrating you. Because this is a milestone, you guys. An author is sitting right next to me and also a friend. And it just like, you know, pulls my heartstrings that any anything could happen it in your really life can. if you just put your, your mind to it. <laughs> so, and also, I want to, so what's your next journey in life? Well, the Tell next us. journey I, life. I know what her next journey is. <laughs> Y'all, be prepared, buckle up your seatbelt, because here we go. Yes, I'm going to be on daytime. I'm going to be on television five days a week. Yes. Compliments of Dr. Phil. Yes. Um, I am going to be the host of a new uh, talk show called Face, Face the, the Truth. Truth. <laughs> and Face the Truth is like a panel style show. I'm the host, along with Ariva Martin, who is our lawyer, mm -hmm. Rosie McCardo, who is our life motivational coach, uh -huh. and Dr. Ho. Oh, Dr. Ho. Dr. Ho is a psychiatrist. Okay, oh, don't get it yes. twisted. And, yes. <laughs> I met her at your party, too. I know. Isn't she pretty? Oh, my God. I love and, her. Uh, she's Asian. My Asian persuasion. See, look at yeah. me. All, all, all us Asians. <laughs> Start from the bottom. Now we made our way to the top. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Cheers yeah, to so Asians. Yes. Yeah, so it's 
executive produced by Dr. Phil. Yeah. And Dr. Phil gets so many letters. So he's now, some of his guests said, um, do you want to go on my new show, Face the Truth, hosted mm -hmm. by Vivica Fox? Yeah. And what they do is they come on our show, they share their problems, and some are funny, some are, are, are sensitive, uh, some are disturbing. Right. Um, so it's all different walks of life that are definitely going to be on the show. Mm -hmm. And so we give them our advice and we try to offer them help yes. straight up with no chaser and for those that want to get help we send them to places to get them help and oh, those wow. that don't at least we hope that they face the, the truth. truth i love so that. coming this fall on cbs okay. and i still remember the uh, letter you wrote to god mm -hmm. where is that so this is in the words of vivica a fox and she wrote to god i want to be successful i want to be a star and i want to work as an actress and I've got a taste of things, but it seems I can't go over the hump. It seems I'm always, almost, just making it and then coming up a little bit too short. If you could just help me to stay focused and help me to stay positive, I promise that I'll be good and do it good and give back. And that was her letter to God. And look at what God has given her. Yeah, yeah look what, good. God is good. I know, he's going to make me cry my lashes yes. off. <laughs> I just got ready. He's going to hold up. Yeah, God is yeah. good. But you know, my mama raised us across the street from the church. Oh, yeah, okay. Off of, off of 38th and Emerson, mm -hmm. um, off of Leland. We lived right across the street from Breeding Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And whenever those church doors were open, uh -huh. we was in church. I used to be like, yeah. mama, we go to church a whole lot. <laughs> but growing, getting older, like I'm really glad that my mother install, inst instilled those morals and discipline and for me to know to never get too bu too big and to know that my blessings come from God. Right. So that's why I always put it first. Mm, yes, yes. And we have some also something in common too. My mom passed away nine years ago of breast mm. cancer and your father passed away last year, yes, right? Yeah. Um, and it was like first of everything for you because it's a, the first Christmas, yeah. first Valentine's Day. And so... His he, first birthday without him being here. Yeah, when was his birthday? Oh, January 25th. Right, January 25th. And yeah. I mean, he is so proud of you, Vivica. I dedicated the book to his memory. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I, I read that too. And yeah. how was your father? Let's talk about your father. Oh, what a great man yeah. too, he was. And yeah, Daddy Fox. Mm -hmm. He was awesome. He was my best friend. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I miss him so much. I miss his early morning calls. He's the only person that could call and wake me up. Uh -uh. I, that when he calls, I would answer and he's like, get up! <laughs> Show daddy calling. <laughs> wake and up! So, yeah, so he used to be my wake up calls a lot of times, but I could talk to my dad about everything, about uh, life, about my trials, my tribulations, my bad mm -hmm. relationships, um, feeling insecure. Right. He was my best friend. He was. And so I miss him. I have candles that when we did his memorial Oh, service, really? Yeah, that I made candles that I'll give you one. Yes. On the way out. Okay. Here you go, darling. Thank you. Those were keepsake uh, candles that we gave to all the guests that came to my dad's uh -huh. memorial service. And we had them made in like four different, um, my god, godson's mother, India, uh -huh. who was my acting coach's daughter, uh -huh. <laughs> Sheila, Sheila, who's in the book, who taught me so many lessons oh my God. about acting. She made these candles, and they were images of, this is of me and my father at that. a, at a daddy, at daughter, daddy and daughter dinner. I love that. Um, that. That we did, and then this was another time when he came to visit me in Toronto. Oh, wow. Yeah, when I was filming. This is great. Yeah, it's and so th th there were like four different kind of candles of each child. Uh -huh. Well, thank you so much, you guys. This is her book, Every Day I'm Hustling. And this is Vivica A. Fox. She's also an author. All right, get it out of stores. Any last words, Viv? Yes, I can. Every Day I'm Hustling is available at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and Audible.com, wherever books are sold. Mm -hmm. Enjoy, and I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for your love and support. I know without you, there would be no me. Thank you, and God bless you. Yes. Well, that's it for today. Stay tuned. Always believe in yourself and make your mark. Yes.